Good evening. Good afternoon. Yeah, I can just see one coming in. Hope it's not Anusha. You can hear a file van going through. That's all right. Hello, ladies. Come on in. An interesting topic today. The hump day. How has it been so far? Hello, Hanusha. Two. Come on, I have to count literally. So how has the day been? Been busy? It kind of like, you know, it's a hump day. It starts off and then it gradually comes and then the weekend. And time kind of like goes on. And okay, let me start. Welcome, welcome to Wholesome Wednesday, session number 13. And today's topic is saris and coffee painting oh my goodness i had never known that something like this existed which is coffee painting and anusha is going to shed some light on coffee painting to tonight i just wanted to let you know what the drape for today is this is an art silk sari i have worn this and this is also my profile picture it's a high time that I need to change the profile picture, but anyway, um, this is an art silk sari. It's a beautiful sari. It just drapes so well and it just neatly sits and it neatly falls as well. And it's a beautiful, it's a pleasure to drape this sari, I tell you. It is an inexpensive sari, but it's just so beautiful to drape this. And it's got a beautiful color too. And since it's a repeat sari, I have already posted what it is all about. And I'm going to repost it tonight as well. And today I've just paired with um, silver uh, crystal jewelry um, for my ear tops and silver bangles. And it's matching shoes. Anyway, I'll be posting that tonight. And I've got a nice crystal clutch to go with that for today. This is a silver one. So this is my styling for today and Anusha will be telling what her sari is all about uh, once when she takes over and just a brief introduction of Anusha. Anusha, uh, I just came to know her through one of my cousin and didn't realize that she's very artistic like you know she's just got the flair of art and it's in her blood and you take it anything like you know you can give her like a discarded or like you know a bottle to be thrown away like a wine bottle or a beer bottle and there she comes she decks it up and you know she just makes it so beautiful and she's got all the knack of combining her creative skills and you know presenting that in a nice format and she has also presented me a couple. Um, I'll just show that to her later on tonight or I'll just post that, what she has uh, done using uh, a, a wine bottle as well as um, she also had done something else. I'll, I'll just show that to you or I'll just post it tonight. And she is, as I told you, she's very creative. She does all types of painting. As you know, painting is an art. And she does it on pebbles, she does it on glass, acrylic, you name it. She, the, the medium is so wide and she kind of like comes up with a unique artistic style which she kind of like portrays and presents it in a nice way. And tonight she will be taking over from me. And before I do that, I just wanted to kind of like, you know, since I'm not into painting, I thought I'd just shed some light on what coffee is all about. I just love coffee. And tonight, I have made myself a mocha. A mocha is a combination of chocolate and coffee. So I'm gonna drink this tonight. Mmm. 
Right, okay, coming to coffee. As you all know, there are so many coffee planters in the group. They kind of like own estates of coffee. They might correct me if I'm incorrect. It's just like, you know, just kind of like, you know, browse through a few minutes ago. There are three different types of coffee beans, which is Robusta, Arabica, and Liberica, I think. And there are different forms of coffee, like, you know, different types of coffee, what we drink. If you go and order a coffee, you can order a cappuccino, you can order a latte, you can order a black, or you can order um, white. You can order mocha, as in M-O-C-H-A, not M-O-K-A. M-O-K-A is different. I'll come to M-O-K-A a little bit later on. Um, there are different types. And um, coming to different um, types of uh, coffee makers. And uh, like, you know, we are so kind of like used to this humble coffee filter, which I have. This is probably about 27 years old. <laughs> I just brought that with me um, when I came, uh, when I migrated first. And this is a humble coffee filter. Like, you know, you can find this in majority of the South Indians. And just of late, it has picked up very widely as well. So this is the humble coffee filter and the coffee is excellent. And I do have a cappuccino machine, but it is kind of like, you know, tucked up in the corner. So I won't be able to show you that. And this is the coffee percolator, like, you know, which wherein I don't know if you guys are not aware of it. You kind of like, you know, put um, the coffee and the water and, you know, just sink it in. And then once it settles down, you kind of like, you know, push it. And this is kind of like available in all workplaces here. And then you have the instant coffee maker, which everyone knows, the Nespresso, which is very kind of like, you know, common. And there are expensive coffee um, machines as well, depending like, you know, what you want, uh, depending on, um, you know, the style and everything, it varies. And I was mentioning to you about the Mocha, M-O-K-A. It's actually an Italian uh, coffee maker and it's different. I did have it. I looked for it. I couldn't find it. If I find, I'll just post a picture. Otherwise, um, you can just Google M-O-K-A what it is. And it's beautiful and um, the coffee, uh, the um, what do you call the concentration of the coffee decoction, what you get in that, it's, it's really, really strong as when compared to this humble coffee um, filter. And back home, we are kind of like used to using a little bit of uh, chicory in that to give that extra tinge. But um, with the Italian coffee, you don't need that. It kind of like, you know, brings up all the, the intense flavors of coffee and it's really, really beautiful. Sorry, this is a sorry gallery, but I just went into <laughs> telling about the coffee. And um, there are expensive coffees as well. Um, one of the coffees which was expensive, which I have tasted as well, which it's kind of like disgusting to tell. But anyway, I'll let you know what it is. It is the Kopi Luwak, which is very popular in Southeast Asia. And I tried that when I went to Bali. And it is basically from the digestive system of, it is similar to cat, like cat-like animal. It comes out of the poo of the cat. And that is the expensive coffee. And other than that, um, it's very popular in Thailand. It is called the black ivory coffee. And it, that also comes from the elephant's poo. And it's, again, kind of like, you know, the fermenting process which takes inside the elephant's tummy, the intestine and everything. And then it comes out, it's completely different. And that taste is, I don't know, I haven't tasted it, so I wouldn't have a clue. But to tell you frankly, I wasn't able to identify the taste of the Kopi Luwak. It was so funny. Like, you know, they gave us a whole a heap of... Uh, um, different flavors of coffee like coconut coffee, vanilla coffee. It was all a blend of different ones and you should have seen the coffee apparatus they had like it was typically like um, in a chemical laboratory like you know they had like two conical flasks or maybe the round glass or something. Um, if I find a photo I'll attach that. It was so beautiful like you know it undergoes through a process and then comes the coffee and then it's just the dash of milk it has to be at the right temperature etc 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 
Anyway, let me put a full stop to coffee. I have spoken so much about coffee. Whilst I enjoy my mocha, Anusha will take over now and she is going to show you all the coffee painting. And also that reminds me, sorry, um, there are uh, other coffees which are very popular, which is Irish coffee um, and the Middle Eastern one. And also the psychic readings. I don't know whether you ladies have heard about coffee reading. Um, it's basically a psychic um, kind of like, you know, uh, a, a kind of like psychic reading. Like, you know, you drink your coffee and whatever is left over is read by the, like, you know, who, whoever does the reading. And they kind of like tell you what the future is. So that's also there. But anyway, uh, I just thought I'll just flag that. And anyway, I'll ask Anusha to take over. And after Anusha finishes, I'll just come back and show you all about how to see the videos because so many of them have asked me how to see the videos, how to go back and check what they are. And I'll just shed some light and hopefully I'll just use my iPad or um, laptop and then I'll show you using my phone. I won't be too long. I'm going to finish off now and I'll ask Anusha to take over. Anusha, here you go, dear. I'm going to take off now and you come over. Thank you very much, ladies. Just stay tuned and she will be coming live on the Sari Gallery just as soon as I say finish. Finish, huh? Hello, Sari lovers. Hi, I'm Anusha Vettupali. I think uh, Hema has given a lovely introduction about myself. Um, so, hi, I'm a former creative teacher in Bangalore and have been migrated to Sydney five years back. I'm still continuing my passion for the crafts and arts and I'm still exploring myself in doing that. Before I start off with the coffee painting, I would like to showcase my few of my art. Just allow me to uh, adjust the camera for a few seconds. So, this is a uh, resin art. It's also called as a resin geode. So it's this is also a raisin heart. The, the base the funniest part of this is like you need to use alcohol inks. You need to know how to handle them and just create a lacing effect using a hair dryer or something like that. I know it is a coffee painting event, but still I'm sorry and I'm just showcasing all my artworks. This is um, mixed media, just on a canvas. I've just put some hair dry clay, place them and then paint them. I usually like to work on the miniatures. This was a, just a peppermint box. It was so cute. I didn't want to throw it away. So I just tried to do some heart using sand and uh, silicone glue. Try to get a beach theme out of it. And fixed it with the resin. These are uh, clay sculptures, completely using a uh, air-dry clay. This is also can be used as a jewelry holder. I 
this is just a written gift for a traditional South Indian gift like they say tambulam completely made up of hair dry clay you can fix a magnet and it does become a fridge magnet too the last one this is the sauce peso art I just tried to fix it on a photo frame this is a special type of film uh, which is not usually available in the stores you need to order order them from on eBay and you need to just burn the candle and eat them the eat the film and emboss them so it is also called as a volume decoupage so let's kindly get into the coffee painting i'll show you a few of my coffee paintings so you just get a brief idea about it this is just trying to experiment different types of scenes how to blend and stuff let's try to make a car because my son is fond of cars and a Buddha it is not perfect yet though I try to make my best out of it this is a mandala art I just tried ex uh, experimenting mandala art with coffee And the last, not the least, the Ganesha. So let me start off with the coffee painting. I'm taking a sim very simple picture. Just I try to sketch them before in hand. Before starting a coffee painting there is a small process where you need to make the mediums properly for coffee painting you usually need an instant coffee because when you mix there won't be any lumps so usually I use brew instant coffee a dark bean color so that the painting looks very nice and you have you get different tones i also use nescafe gold that is also an instant coffee but just a lighter shade i mean what do you say like a lighter bean so i'll be using brew instant now for mixing the medium you just need two cups We'll be mixing light and dark. So this is light. This is dark. So I'm putting the same amount of one spoon of coffee powder in light. And one spoon of dark. You're putting equal amount of coffee into the both the balls. Then comes the water. You need to add just an half spoon for the darker shade. Just try to mix it without any lumps. If you feel it is thicker, you can just add a little more water. feel it is thick so I'm just putting a little water so there it goes 
the darker shade has to be usually a bit thicker and I'm adding at least two spoons of water in the lighter shade at least two so the lighter one is usually a bit thinner than the darker And just removing the lumps out of it so your both tones are ready light and dark usually the coffee painting starts off with the two tones if you still need a one more tone for the backgrounds you can make the lighter one more lighter that I will show you once I finish the base of the paint, then move on. So before start, before starting to paint, you need to always test your tones. So take a piece of paper, just draw a line with a dark tone and the light tone. So I think you can easily see the difference between the dark and the light. So once this is done, you need to move on to the painting. So I'm taking the light shade Just give me a moment. I just need to adjust a few things here. Okay, I hope you are able to see the sketch. So we have to start any painting from the middle or from the center. Usually that's what I follow. So I'm going to start from the center of the flower. I'm just taking the dark shade, putting it here in the between. There. So your center part, usually it is darker. So we're putting that in the between. So usually the middle part is of with this pollen. So I would like to give a bit of texture to that. I'll be adding a bit of instant coffee powder, sprinkling on it. And just tapping. I hope you can see the texture there. So now we're going to the petals. I'm just taking the darker shade to one of the petal and putting to the corners first. This is the dark shade which I'm using. So it goes like this. 
So almost an half of the petal should be covered with the dark shade. Not too thin, not too thick. I'll be taking another brush. Taking a bit of water, just wetting the brush and drag this. So you get an automatically a lighter shade when you just drag with the wet brush and here you can see some prominent lines between the dark and the light so it means it has not blended well take another brush a dry brush and blend well So this is how it blends now. It's natural now. The same process continues for each and every petal. Let me do it. So it's just dark shade. Just making it a bit thicker so that it will be easy to drag so this method is called as dry on wet there are actually two two techniques in coffee painting dry on wet and wet on wet so this is the dry and I'll be taking a wet brush and dragging so that's why it's called as a dry on wet method so I'm just dragging it making sure that the darker portion will remain only a bit need to be dragged So now there you need to bring a differentiation between each petal so you need a darker tone here as well so i take a small bit of dark shade and bring it to the side of the petals as well so that each petal will be looking prominent just blend it with a plain brush so that it looks natural so that same thing we need to do for all petals let's complete it the same way using dry and wet method wetting my brush and just dragging it and so 
so here need to put more dark shade and then wait the coffee painting is usually the cheapest one you can make with your own hands you no need much knowledge about blending and any other techniques all you know, need to know is whether it is merged or not you can do it however you want Just putting it here. So just dragging it with a wet brush. It's simple and easy. So how do you preserve this painting? No uh, special methods need to be taken to preserve this. You can only do it on the paper. Once it is dried, you can directly frame, frame it. Just blending the last few petals of it. And then we can move on to the stem and the leaf. For a coffee painting, you need to have a bit, bit thick paper, preferably 100 GSM. So that you might, you might not see any ripping of the paper. Just blending this. So that's the flower, the petals is done. So you want that touch up. And moving on to the stem. The same technique, we're only putting one side the darker shade and dragging it to the side. I'm using a, a thinner brush size 2 just put a one thick line of dark shade on the petal oh sorry on the stem one side of the stem again a wet brush and dragging to the side so here you have a dark shade 
and this will be a light shade. It's the same with the leaves as well. You just need to take the lighter tone, a light tone and just spread it all over the leaf. So you have a lighter tone here completely on the leaf. So how do you give the veins? Simple as we have only two tones you will be using a dark tone again to give the outline. So it's usually merges quickly. So we are done with the outline of the leaf. Just try to break the bubbles with, if you can, if you find it, or else it gives you an uneven effect. Just taking a dark shade. To give the veins of the leaf. Similarly, the same thing, applying the light shade for the leaves. and the dark shade to give the differentiation between the leaves. You can either use a brown sketch pen if you're not comfortable with the dark shade. So, yeah, we are almost done. So, the flower stem and the leaves is done so if at all you want to give a background color you need to take the lighter shade add two more spoons of water and dilute it more mix it so you get the lightest tone just need to put it all around there. Need to wet the background a bit. Just putting the lightest tone on whichever I have. The 
background need to be the lightest always for the coffee painting so yeah. so I'm just trying to give some gap so that it does not mix up with the petal because it is still wet if you feel excess anywhere you can just take a tissue paper and just tap on the place wherever you feel it is an excess and then continue One part is done, the other part we just need to finish this and almost with the background as well that was a quick and easy coffee painting so there you go this is the final output this is how it looks once it is completed if you still feel you need some touch-ups you can always give once it is dry you can give a second layer of paint again if needed Just putting it to dry. So, so I hope you all enjoyed my techniques of copy painting, and it'll be a foundation for your copy paintings as well. I so you can always ping me. For any questions, I'm happy to answer you. And finally, thank you, Hema, for giving me this amazing opportunity to showcase my skills. My page. And please follow my page, Anusha Gallery. I'll keep in touch with you. Have a good night. Thank you.